But am I proud to be an American? Yes. And as I heard on a podcast earlier this week, you don't have to be perfect to be great. And that applies to these United States of America. There are a lot of great things about America. It may not be perfect, but there are still a lot of great things about America. And one of those things is a great God who watches over us, who keeps us, who protects us. And in spite of what may be going on, things could be a whole lot worse if we didn't have great people praying for this country. So I praise God, and yes, I'm proud to be an American. So thank you for joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We bring you greetings from the greater, Greater Queen AME Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Robert Blake. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we ask that you pray with us and pray for our pastor as he is on a well-deserved restful break. So keep him and our and his wife Lady D in prayer for safe travels, for protection, for rest, renewal, and rejuvenation as they spend time together away. So at this time we will have oh announcements. Uh, Bible study has been put is on hold or pause hiatus for the month of July. Again, Bible study morning and evening are on hiatus for the month of July. However, what's not on hold is prayer. Every day, Monday through Saturday at noon. So while pastors are away, we have some amazing officers or elders in some denominations who will still be leading the charge, who will still be making sure that prayer is held at noon on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And that is held uh, via the telephone. So you can call in. And that number is 313-246-9552. Again, the call in for prayer at noon, Monday through Saturday, 313-246-9552. And um, if you want to be kept abreast of what's going on with the writer, you can text uh, the letters G Q C to eight four five seven six. Again, if you want to be kept in the know, eight four five seven six. And now, if I haven't forgotten anything, we'll be led in prayer by our own dynamic Reverend Doctor Laura Elizabeth Foster. Amen. Hallelujah. It's another day journey. Amen. And I'm glad about it. Are you a, you are glad, aren't you? Can we have some? Thank you, God. Your eyes are open. Hallelujah. You came in this church. Hallelujah. You have faith and eyes and all of that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Some of some of y'all just say, oh no, I'm so hot, so loud. But I'm loud. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm here for the morning prayer. First Corinthians, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. The morning prayer is, but what is it is written? I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. The world is full of things to see. Even if you aren't a world traveler, all you have to do is hop online and you can see it all. Whatever your mind can imagine, you can probably find it on the internet. You can literally see just about anything online if you search long enough, nothing is left to the imagination anymore. I'm going to say that again. Nothing is left to, to the imagination anymore. 
How amazing is it then that what God has prepared for us is greater than anything that our eyes have seen or our ears have heard. It is even greater than anything we could have imagined in our hearts. Our God is a creative God. What he has in store for us is so far beyond anything we can ever think about. How exciting to know that we ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Father, I am filled with anticipation at the thought of what you have prepared for us. I am excited to see what we have created. And I thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. I thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. I thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. Amen.
We thank you, God, that you make ways for us over and over again. That you open doors for us again and again and again. That you keep us again. That you protect us again. Hallelujah. Over and over and over again, God. And we say thank you. Father, now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, I submit myself to you. I am but your servant, but your vessel. Come on, Holy Spirit, and do what you do. Pour from me a word that will bless your sons and daughters. Pour from me a word that will uplift and encourage your sons and daughters. Pour from me a word, Father God, that will take us to new levels in you, Father God. Open our hearts. Open our minds, oh God. Let this word fall on good ground, Father God. Let it fall on fertile soil, Father God, to produce a harvest for your kingdom, God. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Yes. And the people of God say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Falling in love with Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful, Chris. Amen. Yeah. You kept it right there for a moment. Amen. <laughs> Best thing I've ever done. Best thing. Yeah. Best thing I've ever done. Falling in love with him. Hallelujah. Not just taking him from time to time, popping in and say hi every now and then when I need something. Not just giving him a call and giving him a call and then, amen. Come on. Love with him. Hallelujah. Having a relationship with him. The best thing. The best thing I could have ever done. Lovable. He is so kind and so wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The word of God reads: When Samuel, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repair work of the walls of Jerusalem was making progress and that the gaps were being filled in, they became furious. All of them plotted to attack Jerusalem to create confusion. But we prayed to our God and set guards to protect us day and night. Then the people of Judah said, the work rooms are worn out and there is too much rubble. We can't continue to rebuild the wall. Our enemy said, before they know what is happening or see a thing, we will be right in the middle of them. We'll kill them and bring the work to an end. Jews who were living near our enemies warned us ten times that our enemies would attack us from every direction. That is why I positioned people by their families behind the wall where it was lowest and most exposed. The people were armed with swords, spears and bows. I looked them over and proceeded to tell the nobles, the leaders, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of our enemies. Remember how great and how awe-inspiring the Lord is. Fight! Hallelujah! Fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives and for your homes. When our enemies heard that we knew about their plots, that God and that God had prevented their plans from being successful, we all went back to the work on the wall. Each person performed his own job. From that day on, half of my men worked on the wall, and the other half were wearing body armor and holding spears, shields, and bows. The leaders stood behind all the Judeans who were rebuilding the wall. The workers who were carrying loads did the work with one hand, and held their weapons with the other hand. And each builder had his sword fastened around his side. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. For the next few minutes, I'm going to preach on the topic you are worth fighting for. Hallelujah. You are worth fighting for. 
This passage of scripture from the book of Nehemiah deals with the city of Jerusalem and the state it was in. This is after, after they had, con had been conquered by, um, by the Babylonians, after God had allowed them to be conquered because of their disobedience. And now we have a remnant that have returned. And though they have returned, they are still living amongst rubble. They are still living amongst decay. They are still living amongst debris. They have not yet rebuilt the walls of the city and have not yet put the city back together again. They've been there for some years. It's not that they've not had time. They've been there for some years, but just for some reason, they've not been able to get the energy or the motivation or the vision, we don't know what it is. Perhaps they were just busy trying to survive. Hey, Amen. You ever been there where you're just busy trying to survive? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to make it from day to day. I, I understand that there's all these issues out there going on, but I'm just be honest. I'm just trying to make it from day to day right now. I'm just trying to, to pay my bills. I'm just trying to put some food on the table. Right now, I got a little bit too much going on to be concerned about all these other things. I'm going to be concerned about world issues, to be concerned about poverty, to be concerned about all the things going on around me, all of the rubble and all of the debris that's in my path. I cannot focus on it because right now, I got to put food on my table. I just don't have time. And so they had been there, but they had not yet dealt with the debris that was around them. They had not yet deal, dealt with the destruction that was around them. But then God gives a man named Nehemiah a vision. Nehemiah had not returned, but, but God gave him a vision. And so he returned to lead the rebuilding of this wall. And we thank God that he sent a Nehemiah. He sent a man that had vision, a man that had motivation, a man that desired to have this wall rebuilt. But of course, once they started the work, here comes opposition. The haters. Amen. You can always count on the come. Amen. That's one thing about having a vision. Don't think that everyone's going to fall in line with your vision. Don't think that everyone's going to see what you see. God gave the vision to you. So you can't worry about if other people see what you see. If other people fall in line with, with what you want to do. You have the vision from God. And with the vision, there will always come challenges. There will always come people that will try to stop the work. And so there were these persons who rose up against them to try to frustrate their plans there, to try to confuse them, to try to intimidate them, to try to scare them, to try to get them to stop what they were doing. But Nehemiah was undistracted, amen? And that's how we have to be. We have to be undistracted. We have to be focused on what it is that God has called us to do. The job was simple. They needed to rebuild this wall around them. They needed to be, rebuild the wall so that they would be protected from the enemies. They needed to clean up the debris. They needed to build the wall because the, the wall served as a source of defense where they could be up on high ground and see their enemies coming towards them. But for some reason, they had not recognized the importance of this. When we look around today at our communities, there's a lot that needs to be rebuilt. We look around and we see, we see a lot of debris. We see poverty. We see addiction. We see depression, all sorts of debris, everywhere. And our communities need to be rebuilt. There's work to be done. Each of us have a job or a role to play. But before we can deal with our communities, 
You have to deal with you. What about the brokenness in you? What about the torn down and broke down places in you? What about the places that you have not dealt with, the hurts and the pains that you have not dealt with, the disappointments that you have not dealt with, the despair that you have not dealt with, the grief that you have not dealt with, the brokenness, the broken down places that reside in you, that reside in me. We cannot go forth thinking that we're going to impact the community when we ourselves are broken down. We have to get ourselves together, amen? We have to repair the breaches in our lives. We have to allow the power to put us back together again. We have to work on us, and then we can go out to be who God has called us to be in the community. That's why we have church after church after church after church on almost every block. And it doesn't seem like we're making a difference. It does not seem like we're making an impact. We have drug dealers hanging out in front of the church. We have people shooting up in front of the church. Why? Because the church has not dealt with itself. Amen? We have not dealt with our own brokenness. We have not put ourselves, our own selves together so that we are able to be an impact in this world around us. Brokenness mm. comes in so many different ways. Brokenness from childhood hurts, childhood abuse. Brokenness. Brokenness from failed relationships and failed business adventures. Brokenness. Things that leave us hurt to our core. But there's good news. Hallelujah. There is good news. Hallelujah. The scripture says, remember our God and how awe-inspiring he is. Remember our God and how amazing he is and how incredible he is and that he will fight for us. Hallelujah. He will fight for us. He will fight for you. He will, he will put himself on. Oh, my God. 
fight. And the weapons are of our warfare are not part of their mighty God for the tearing down of strongholds. Our weapons are prayer. Our weapons are the word of God. Our weapons are fasting, the spiritual disciplines. These are our weapons that we have to utilize. And I tell you, these weapons are effective if we would but use them. They work. Hallelujah. And so we see the people of God having to work. The work can't stop everybody. We do still have to work. But we also have to fight. We also have to be prepared to fight. We also we have to have our weapons ready for use at all times. You can't be searching through the Bible, looking for the verse when the, when the enemy is attacking. Right, right, right. You gotta get in that thing in your spirit. <laughs> you gotta get it in your heart. You, you have to know it. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. Teach. Do you see the plan that he was going to sneak up on them? You understand there was so much rubble, so much confusion going on around them that he recognized that, that they couldn't even see them coming, so they would be upon them before they even know, yeah. knew it. This is the situation we're in. There is so much going on around us, so much confusion around us, that we don't even recognize who the enemy is speaking upon us. And before you know it, he is right there in our midst. But somebody has to be watching. Somebody has to be praying. Somebody has to be fasting.
attacking my children, but today I'm getting my swagger out He wants you to, he wants to come into your heart today. He wants you to 
forward to his name. It's a sacred time. It's a sacred time. Let's recite the general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Together, therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, and remember of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. Hallelujah. He took the bread.
And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, thank you so much. Take and eat. This is the body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you. Thank you for the body. Thank you, Jesus, for your, the bruises that you took for us. Thank you for the, your body broken for us. I take it. The Bible says that likewise after supper, he took the cup. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Your blood that will never lose its power. The blood of Jesus shed for me. I'll never forget. Thank you, Lord. And now you at home, you may take your bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities. Take and eat. And then you may take the cup. The cup represents the blood of the new covenant. The blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Take and drink all of it. Having done so, you have renewed your covenant of faith, my brother. You have renewed your covenant of faith, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. Pray. Something say or pray the priest has been a blessing to you this afternoon. I pray that you understand that you're worth fighting for. I pray that you give your I wish you would that. I pray that you understand that if God is for you, who can be against you? I pray. That every area of brokenness in your life is healed. And that you walk in the wet and well, you walk in wellness and in the fullness of God. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Next week we have an awesome preacher coming to bring the word, the curse of Reverend Dr. Lord Elizabeth Foster. Amen. Their time of rest and relaxation, and they will be back with you on the third Sunday of this month. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just trust him. Just trust him. Just trust him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. brothers and my sisters. Now, unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you.